Hello everyone, my name is Simon Scott Nelson. I am co-founder and CEO at Wellity Global. Hello, my name is Sadie Restrick. I'm the co-founder and COO at Wellity Global. Hi, I'm Johnny Wilkinson and I am co-founder of Inspired. Hi, I'm Mark Wilkinson and I'm co-founder of Inspired. Hello, you two. Good day. Morning. 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 Uh, beautiful surroundings that we find ourselves in. How are you both today? Very good. We had a chance to spend a bit of time together last night, which is nice because we're living further apart nowadays, which is, uh, yeah, it's, it's always nice to catch up and have a bit of time to relax and face to face. So, yeah, good. You? Yeah, exactly the same. Always nice to catch up with face to face as opposed to on FaceTime. Yeah, it's been a nice yeah. change. I've got two brothers. Do you revert back to being teenagers the minute you see each other? Or? A little bit. I'm not sure if we left far no. enough <laughs> to revert, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Not a great deal of growing up that's no. happened. No, yeah, yeah, so. I'd love to be a fly on the wall. Yeah. Um, well, so we're here today to discuss what you two have effectively created mm -hmm. and to find out a bit more of what brought you together in the first place to bring together skill sets or was it just you wanted to work together and I think work on something? What we're very interested in is, is kind of tapping into that bigger part of who we are that automatically inspires performance leadership relationships and in our case I think it's exactly the same as we've kind of gone on our own little different versions of that journey we've become more open so all of a sudden what's brought us close together is like you said before as teenagers we're we're playing together and doing all these things and there's a relationship there but then there's a deeper part of that relationship and I think as we've gotten older we've explored more of that and all of a sudden we're talking about different things that we're used to sharing things that were kind of like, I never knew you know that was going on with you at that age and this age and oh so you feel the same so we're kind of going on that journey so it's it's not a a, a coming together in a business plan it's like a yeah we're going on that, that journey ourselves and as we have this has become a, a natural kind of organic you know inspired idea that just fits us both it certainly fits me yeah i think we uh, we've had parallel journeys obviously knowing each other since well, I met Johnny when he was born. Yeah. But then time together, time apart, I was away, parts of education, I lived away when I was, I'm 18 months older than Johnny, so I was off at university, he wasn't. And then we kind of lived in each other's pockets in Newcastle for the best part of a decade with the rugby and living in the kind of the false world of professional sport. But if anything, it was probably more where we went off on different tangents and had time apart where we realised in our own way and came to almost not exactly the same conclusions, but we learned things through the time where we weren't together. Yeah, facing actually, our own challenges. Yeah, which actually kind of was nice to have something to talk to each other about that we didn't already know because we hadn't both <laughs> been there. Yeah. And, and that's where a lot of this came from, was kind of realising from our experiences in different parts of the world, but also in different ways and different times of our lives that we come to the same sort of conclusions. I mean, I know... I still call people from school my best mates, but I haven't seen them for like mm. 20, 30 years. But those memories are so integral to me as and my silly sense of humour, as I'm sure it is with everyone else. It's really what grounds you, isn't it? It's almost like you've got a, not a second chance, but you're finding, you're going back and finding out more about each other. I mean, I think there's a lot of families, friends who would find that you're very lucky that you've got this opportunity and you give yourself the freedom to relax and explore it, do you? Absolutely. But I think f for me, it was a little bit of, there was a change from seeing Johnny just as my brother to actually seeing Johnny as a friend and another adult. And sometimes you lose that a bit with family because you just see family. And then you, when you start to listen to someone in that way and understand that it's not just, oh, I'm just a brother, <laughs> you actually start to learn more. And so that you then add like another layer to that relationship and your connection and your friendship because all of a sudden there's another factor being introduced into it. Yeah. I mean, you both mentioned the word connection there and that depth of authentic connections sort of under the surface, under the identity of, like you say, being related brothers, etc. It's like well, who, are, who is as a person and the challenge he's gone through. So is it the sense with, with the programme that you want to pass on that enlightenment and the, that discovery of the power of deeper connection to other people? Uh, I think, well, I, I don't think, uh, what's really, really strong for me in, in this idea is that to connect, you've got to open up, not close down. And all the ideas you get of someone 
the more you hold on to those ideas that you have with someone else, the, the, the less open you are to connecting. The Sparks have said, it, yeah, we've played roles in those growing up times, you know, brother, teammates, housemates, and then, you know, whether it be kind of confidence or sounding boards or whatever, but actually the, the connection there to something deeper is in, in stripping back all of that to find a much deeper purpose for why we're here in each other's lives. I think we can get carried on with, carried along with things like, you're older than me, I'm younger, you're my brother, I'm your brother, you know, you've done this. It's, it doesn't matter. What matters is just how you are right now. And that's where potential is right here and now. Because if you're living in what you've done, you're not here and now. If you're concerned with how you're going to be and what's going to define you in the future, you're not here and now. So that connection isn't about building an image that I can connect from. That's just playing a deeper role. It's actually about uncovering what's right here now. And as I think we've both become more vulnerably sort of, I guess, inclined, you know, or inclined to be that vulnerable space, we find ourselves getting some real depth, as you said, to where it's going. It's not all just about sharing, you know, what you fear about. It's actually just about being ready to truly learn as opposed to f try and fit, you know, whatever it is into your image. You're actually saying, oh, I want to just explore whatever is here. And, and that's been big, I think, for yeah. us. And that, I think just to add on to that, that, as well as that connection to others, it's a big part of actually connecting to yourself, particularly in certain aspects and certain areas and the conversations that we try and have is to get a deeper understanding and actually take the time to think, well, do I really enjoy doing this? Or is mm. this something that I want to be doing? Which are kind of questions that's quite easy to avoid because a lot of the time they are awkward. Having a chat with the person in the mirror and trying to be friends with them isn't always the easiest. Because you're, because you're lowering the walls to try and find out more about yourself without restricting yourself by what you think you should or shouldn't be. And this word vulnerability in leadership seems to be everywhere at the moment. What does vulnerability in this process mean to you? How can you be vulnerable or is vulnerable just something you are? I think vulnerability for me is a movement. It's yeah, because you've got the reinforcement being a movement sort of in the direction of where you're already going, the vulnerability and a movement inwards. And I think there's no doubt for me vulnerability means not knowing and being comfortable with not knowing because everything else is about closure and reassurance and guarantees and security. Vulnerability is insecurity, but being somehow curiously inspired and, and motivated by going into a space of not knowing. And it's so easy to play that game of, of knowing by not knowing, almost kind of saying, I know where I'm going because this not knowing is going to get me to where I want to go. But, to lower that wall, you've got to be open to the unknown. Anything could happen. And I'm going to be okay with that, which means ultimately I'm willing to listen to what the universe or the others around me, all that energy is telling me, rather than sort of say that this is who I am, who I think I am, and I want this to win. So that at the end of my life, I can still be who I am, which is another way of saying I just don't want to grow. So what we're, what we're looking at here is, you know, the idea that people come spend some time with us, that you're going to get answers would just be a movement in reinforcement. It'd be, yeah, you know, so we're not passing on anything. Yeah, okay. We don't say, this is your potential, because I mean, it's the worst thing you could possibly say as a coach. I say, this is your potential, here, have it. It's like, well, yeah, yeah, like, well, well, what this do I know about you? Can be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No less. But, but, but so the concept being that we're not handing over anything. We're sharing a journey and just becoming more inspired by growing and evolving than by getting answers, which then become the next problem. It's, it's so interesting, isn't it? It's so interesting to hear because it like gives another layer of what leadership is. We can't define it ourselves or have others define it. Sometimes it's just someone bringing out what's, what's in there. I once had my struggles with my own mental health and it was so frustrating trying to be something and shoehorn myself into a box that I didn't fit in. It was only when I sort of gave up a bit and just went, that's it, I've had enough. When I was nothing, it kind of made me, gave me the ability to be anything. It almost like someone wiped the, the everything clean and then you can sort of redefine again. Is there something on here that might, I mean, I don't know if you relate to that or something that could break 
stereotypes don't break effectively what we think. How do you shatter what the norm is when we say that's your, that's what you can be? How do we shatter what that is and start again? I, I think that's kind of what we're interested in is bringing people towards that vulnerability through an understanding that essentially that vulnerability is is life and in a way grabbing conclusions and ideas and holding on to them is a kind of it's a very strong term but it's a kind of it's the opposite of living it's a movement towards the end by saying this is it now what we're saying is opening up and growing and blossoming you know as with regard to the seed you know a seed in order for a seed to blossom into something it has to crack open and, and, and die off and this is what you're kind of doing with those ideas of who you are is if you want to keep them you're going to stay as the seed you want to see what's in there you know you've got to that's got to come away but by coming away you can't control what flower grows afterwards that's the journey into the unknown you just know i'm going to blossom that's the journey but actually saying i want i'm going to crack open the seed but only if i guarantee i'm going to get this flower and it's going to grow like this and it'll be this color you're kind of like but then that idea is what keeps the seed closed. As you know, in life, you know, that kind of, well, I'm about to do this, but I want the answers. I want the guarantees somewhere. I want, and people think about that dealing with pressure. It's the pressure and the way I get out of it is confidence. Confidence is just knowing exactly how it's going to go. But what if confidence was just, you know, that kind of different relationship with the unknown? Is it kind of like journaling in, in a bit? If you told yourself, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to write about this for 10 minutes, you'd just be restricted in that. Whereas if you say, I'm just going to, open up my thoughts and just write whatever I want? Is it the freedom? I, I think it's, if you find yourself in a position where you don't necessarily like your current experience of life, the risk of replacing one set of expectations with another and, it, and then thinking it will be any different is quite depressing in a way. The number of times you can find yourself going, if I can just do this, things will be okay. And then when you get to that point, it's exactly the same but I'm just a bit older and I'm now a little bit more tired and I've just spent a load of time achieving something that's not really made me happy. And I think that's kind of what we're, we're, we're looking at is when you hold those expectations very strongly, you're refining all the time your possible experience of things and you're kind of putting the blinkers on yourself. Whereas that ability to as you said, wipe the slate clean and be a little bit like, okay, cool, right. I where, don't know what the answers to? are. <laughs> and again, but that's also, you know, it's, it's not suggesting that that's not intimidating and scary and that oh, it's easy to just go and wipe the slate clean and crack on with it. But it's, it's finding a place where you can have those conversations and, and find those sorts of things and allow yourself to work your way into that as opposed to just jumping in straight off in at the deep end. Talking about expectations, and how heavy they can sometimes feel, particularly when we place them on ourselves. And we know from research that a lot of people experience can identify with imposter syndrome and this, this, this fear that essentially they're not good enough and they have something to prove and they work very, very, very hard to try and almost compensate for that and load on the pressure and they're constantly thinking about externally how they're representing what other people are thinking and they're, they're constantly trying to catch up with that, essentially. How do you think, in relation to what we were referring to in the programme, you know, how could that help people combat that because we see and know that that's something a lot of people are going through particularly at the moment for me the imposter syndrome is interesting we both had that something we'd have spoken about all the time you know kind of that feeling of um i don't deserve to be here and you know there's others that should be here and you know i'm going to get found out and all this kind of stuff or, or for me it represented by if things were good it was kind of I'm going to get slipped up here. Where's the big banana skin? And always a bit of a pull towards humiliation, you know, for, for we speak a lot about survival and physical survival versus reputational survival. And physical survival is about, you know, kind of, I guess, looking after just, just staying alive. But that reputational survival, for me, it was, it was, humiliation was the end of that. That's what challenged it. That was the ultimate end to my power as a person was being humiliated. So every time things are going well, that's when you're at the biggest danger of being humiliated. So that's when you go into major alert mode. When things are going terribly, you're kind of like, can't get much worse. I'm good. So what you do is you put yourself in that space the whole time. You keep 
putting yourself in a space where you're back, you, you convince yourself your back's against the wall, can't get any worse, even though things are great. So you basically say, when it's good, I don't want it. When it's bad, I can't stand it. But actually what for me was the case when people complimented me, I'd be like, don't you dare. <laughs> no, 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 I don't want that because you're raising me up. You know, so I'd be say, I, when, but when people slated you, like, I can't believe I said that. But actually, then you go to the you know a match for us, sit in the change room, and say, "Oh, I'm loving this because they don't care about me. The, this club doesn't care about me. No one's given me a chance. I'm going to go out there." And then you'd be, yeah, you'd have that. But it was just permission to let go. And the thing is, though, with all this in posture syndrome, is that it's not something to get rid of. There's a message in it. There's an understanding. That different understanding that 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 communication that's trying to happen through that emotion is different for everyone. And understanding it at your speed and coming to terms with what it means is how it's transcended. It's not something you just sort of like move out the way. That doesn't transcend it. That doesn't own it. That doesn't take you past it. That just kind of keeps it at arm's length, which means when you then turn around, you go, oh, no, it's still there. Mm -hmm. So how do you absorb it? And But then part of that, as we're talking about again, is you're not... <sighs> That's, you're never going to get to the end of challenges. Vulnerability is having those challenges. And as long as there's challenge and there's vulnerability, there's growth. So if you want the end of your challenges, you want an imposter syndrome gone, you're kind of like, okay, there'll be something else. And it'll still be a message. The key is just keep, you know, get excited about what are these messages? How can I grow? And, and then relate that to what is my calling in life? People are in great positions in jobs and they have amazing opportunities to influence. And they're there for a reason. And the desire is, linked to that what's my reason for being here in life what's what am i supposed to do am i lifting people up am i inspiring am i here to do this i don't know but i'm going to find out and go on that journey and that imposter syndrome is, is a large part of you know how do i make the most of what i'm supposed to be doing it's not a case of oh, i'm going wrong or there's something wrong with me it's like well this is a, a massive massive step towards understanding right here and now what am i supposed to be doing and me facing this challenge head on is a large part of what i'm supposed to be doing not it's in the way of what I'm doing. This is, this is the work. And that switch between running away from challenges and getting slightly curiously excited by them is, is, is that confidence thing. Yeah. And that's something that I think people need to get. I say people need to. It, it, maybe that association with failure could be looked at more positively. That actually, if we look at failure, that is looking at growth. And just as an aside, when you were worried so much with the imposter syndrome about the humiliation, and, and you say you've both had it, what was that humiliation in your head? How did it look? And did it ever personify itself? Did it actually ever happen in any shape or form? <laughs> the, 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 the interesting thing for me with imposter syndrome is that I have maybe the most visceral version of it ever in that my time playing professional rugby, I played in his position just after he been part of the World Cup winning team. But also, you played in other positions, but when I was injured, you but took over. When he was injured, yeah. I went into his position, mainly because they'd printed the shirts with Wilkinson. <laughs> and I think it was easier to just put an air <laughs> at the front. But I'd never played that position at any level of rugby. So to then, my first game in that position was in the Premiership at the highest level of domestic rugby. And I am being told to just do what your brother does. And I'm like, going, yeah, what, how? <laughs> and, it, and it's crushing because it's, you're, you're setting aside a part of yourself and saying, you're not quite important enough for right now. Just try and be someone else. And we joke about it, but I made it onto Eurosport's top 10 most disappointing sporting siblings list at number seven. So I didn't even get in the top five. <laughs> okay. so it was a double, it was a double kick in the pants yeah. but at the time those things were important because you feel like you're in the spotlight and it's other people's opinions other people's opinions it didn't matter what I thought whether I'd had a good game because I had a score out of 10 in the paper or I'd made it onto this list and that for me was something it wasn't necessarily a low point but it was something for me that it was a very tangible feeling of okay well this is what it feels like when all the what ifs that I spend all this time creating in my head, if, if a small percentage of them started to come true, this is what it would feel like. Now, in the grand scheme of things, now with perspective, I can stand back and go, that's really not a big deal. 
but at the time it mm. felt you know you I couldn't look past it it was here all the time and so it gives you that feeling and, and professional sport we, we, which we've spoken about at length between us is it's an interesting microcosm of real life which you live at 10 times the speed so you go through everything but in a short period of time and it's a false reality but it does give you some incredible learnings that then extend out of that and you can take outside of that because it's you're under the microscope and everything is intense and magnified but for me the that that level of what your brain creates if you allow it to go to that negative place the realities that you can create for yourself about what if what if way worse than what actually ever really occurs yeah i think also the inevitability we speak about this a lot the inevitability of now is really important to take into account that's the part of acceptance is that things are as they are and you can say because they're supposed to be and all these things but it, and that's all kind of implicitly understood but it's just things are as they are and people think that's often the path but it's actually right now things are as they are the only thing that's not as it is is what's next and so in order to come to terms with doing something about that it comes to a state of getting comfortable with what is and now you can be free to use all your faculties and and address them and put all your attention in the space of what do i want next but we all live in this space imposter syndrome whatever the other things it's all reactivity and when we are reacting what's happened is inevitable what's happening now is inevitable what is now is inevitable but what happens next is largely inevitable as well when you're reacting hence why we go around in this cycle of finding the same situations in our lives the same things Whereas when you, to, to cut that reactivity by coming to an acceptance of now, deeply, the unknown, losing all those guarantees, but coming to it, and then to be able to say, right, I'm now wiped set clean, as you said, free to then, what do I want for next? And now you can break that cycle. And breaking cycles is about potential. Because as long as you're going round and round, you know what's coming. And actually, when you go round and round, you drop inside the line because you're reinforcing like building walls around yourself, you reinforce from the inside. You don't go outside the wall to build that way. You build from inside because you don't go outside the wall. So life gets smaller. I think having that capacity to break the cycle comes down to acceptance. And that's always the, the, that's always the solution to a challenge. Whatever the challenge is, the, the growth comes from acceptance. It doesn't come from, okay, um, I've had this challenge. I've learned this formula about me and everything and now I can add that in it's a case of like something's in the way that's why it's a challenge and once that goes the meaning of the challenge comes out not from the challenge but from the inside what I've released by letting go of that comes out and that's the meaning whereas I think always looking at the the thing for the meaning but to sit in that challenge is how the answer comes out to release not to you know keep looking at why someone said that what's this thing is to say no what am I feeling about it what do I need to let go of? Go into that space and go, this can take a long time. It can happen in very quick instances. It can happen through conversations with others, whatever it is. But it, at some point, the, the idea of a challenge is not that you win the challenge, because if you win the challenge, what you must have had was enough. And if you keep winning, you never, add, you never reveal anything more than what you've got. So winning an argument is so limiting. Winning rugby games, winning everything, being unbeaten, you know, you look at any team that goes on an unbeaten run in sport, they go like this and they plateau. All you can and, do is lose. Oh, you can, and, and yeah, exactly. And they go to a stage of being like, oh no, and, and they start becoming more and more. We did it with the World Cup in 2003, you know, during the summer. Wow, pool games, oh, semi final, yeah. uh, and then you're hanging on by dear life. Whereas actually, what you then get is they lose that team, and then the next game they're like, whoa, they're free. Now, it's the same as all of this. So every time you get that challenge, it's the dip in the roller coaster that speeds you up the other side. And it's also the ride on the roller coaster that everyone queues up for. No one wants the one that just pops around. And no one wants the one that goes straight down. No one wants the one that goes straight up. You want the ups and downs. You want the speed. You want the thrill that makes you go. Sometimes, I want to get off. And then you hit the next bit and go, I never want to get off. <laughs> never take me off this. Get me off this. That's the point. But underneath, you have to realize that's a roller coaster. It's a ride. It's not the real thing. The real thing is stable. The roller coaster appears within the life. Life isn't on the roller coaster. And that's the revealing is to come back for me anyway to that more stable setting in who I am, which is you know, stable but hugely revealing that allows you to have a slightly different you know, kind of relationship with life, which means you're no longer 
as reactive. There, there needs to be reactivity. That's the challenge. I'm reacting again. Without the reactivity, you're flatlining. You get the reactivity, you're down, but then it's a different relationship, which, which means that then you start to enjoy and see and, and, and start looking for the, the next step, which is the growth. You know, we kill those ages, don't we? Sparks talks about in his physical side about how the body is stressed, but then the adaptation is the key, how to optimize the adaptation. But with life's challenges, it's the same thing. You get challenged and the stress of that. But then how do you optimize the adaptation coming out the back of that challenge? Because if you don't do that, the challenge is met by another challenge, by another challenge. You know, you're on that roller coaster that just heads down into you know, at breakneck speed downwards. And you, you sort of adaptation is, is the recovery, isn't it? And about the, the growth and about the learning. That's the, that's the use of It's a great analogy about the roller coaster. And actually, let's you know we can grow to maybe look forward to our going down because we know that something's going to happen, and it's part of the journey. We take those away. Yeah, we, we, we do it all the time. As Johnny was saying, you know, the the idea of super compensation is you go to let's say take a gym session for example. You go to the gym, you get sore and tired, but then you sleep and eat really well, and you come back and you pass the initial start point. And that's your super compensation. That's your adaptation, your improvement. It looks like a roller coaster. It's, it's, the analogy kind of is good. It holds up in a lot of places. So in your experience, this transition to being more accountable for choices, because this is what you're referring to, right? We have a choice and how we respond in a situation and how we're looking to adapt. And that taking back that power, because we do live in quite a, a blame culture where it's like, you know, it's government's fault, it's their fault, it's my company's fault, where it's somebody's fault that we're stressed and under pressure and burning out and we're suffering. What are your thoughts about taking people on that journey of looking inwardly about what can I do about what I'm feeling and, and get to know myself and almost that sense of self-compassion, essentially? I think, you know, I get supposed to see what we both think on this, but the, for me, the interesting thing about choice is that if you make it ahead of time it's not actually a relevant choice it then becomes another non-choice you know if i if we're stood outside this room before we start chatting to you guys and we've got a script of our answers then when you speak to me it's not my choice what i say it's a preconceived idea that's now holding me hostage so if you ask the question slightly differently i'm like oh my god i've got my answer and it doesn't fit anymore what am i going to do and i'm stressed but so the choice is something that belongs to the moment it belongs to who you are and there's a deeper part of that, which is, you know, that whether what that part of you is, whether you're there to uplift and to bring people together or what it is that your unique thing is. But having that trust in that incredible moment to be able to say it will be revealed in the moment. But also there's a structure around that. So obviously I'm not going to sit here. I've come here, you know, sort of dressed in a certain way. We've arrived at a certain time. We're sitting in a certain way. We understand the general gist of what we're talking about. But that structure is just there to say, right, and now go. It's not holding you there during the whole conversation. I think choice is a difficult one because people are making choices ahead of time and then getting stuck to them. And that spontaneity is responsibility, huge amounts of it. But reactivity is the same. You know, we are talking before, you've got your preconceived idea, you react to it. To have choice, you've got to properly let go and you can't know necessarily what that choice is gonna be. And again, we're into that unknown. You can have a general idea of what your choices will be. You know, if someone says this, most likely I'm going to go for that. But if you remove the unknown, it's not actually your choice anymore. There's a huge paradox to understanding what potential is and where it all comes from. And the, for me, the, the basic gist of it is, is that your potential is bigger than you. It doesn't belong to you. You channel it. You don't own your potential. You can't take credit for your potential. You can't know your potential it comes through you, you've got to set the conditions to allow it to come through you, which is why it's so good to have conversations where you just don't know what you're going to say and you just start, just go and let your let your your mouth and your brain trying to catch up with your potential. Your potential is going, I'm going here and your mouth, brain's going, I haven't worked that out yet, yeah. stop. <laughs> yeah. And obviously when it comes out, you then sit back and go, where did that come from? Oh, I don't know. Well, I'll write it down so I say it again. Don't. It doesn't belong in the next moment. It's had its time. It was perfect for then. Don't start being like, right, every time I speak, I'm going to use that one. <laughs> We're back to that same thing of comparing and yeah, contrasting. Yeah. But I think, <clears throat> pardon me, the, the big point is that whenever we work with any group of people, 
we learn way more than, than we teach. <laughs> yeah. And it's never, a very selfish journey. We're actually just doing it for ourselves. <laughs> We're only in it for us. But you never ascribe to know exactly what someone's got going on in their lives or what they're exactly what they're facing. Or yes, I understand your situation implicitly, every factor. You can't, and it's false to do so. So when you talk about choice, what we try to do, it's not something that you can just push across the table. Got it now, see you later. Buy a polo shirt, all good. <laughs> it's like an introduction to, you need to work this out for yourself. You've got some work to do here. At the pace that you're ready, in a way that you understand and are comfortable with to begin with, because you have to be comfortable so that you can start to get uncomfortable. And that's kind of the key, that it's not a one-size-fits-all and it's not a, we know you, you need this one. Yeah, you're one of these people. Yeah, we've it's, seen guys like okay, you Yeah, and it's that some people will dive into this. Some people will give you some tremendous resistance, both of which are awesome because, as, as Johnny says, with any sort of energy, you can do something. What you can't work with is... And, and that's, that's the interesting part of it is that this everybody's experience of this will be different and everybody's got a different set of variables and everybody's bringing different things to the table all you're showing is that there's an element of control that you can gain by understanding that you haven't got control mm. over most of mm -hmm. it and that's kind of the one key thing for everybody is that nobody's a hundred percent control in control of everything no matter what photos that yeah they're, they're no matter showing. what yeah so for the point of authenticity <clears throat> We had a, um, a kind of list of a vague idea of where we wanted to go this morning, and then we decided that we were going to sat, um, sit and discuss. It's because of that decision that we found out about, you know, when you uh, had that moment when you were at your lowest mark, and, and it well, may not be in your lowest, but when things weren't quite going right and you felt slightly out of control. And we talk about resilience so much now, and the learnings that you can take from that period. What, what would you say are the learnings that you took from that period? How can, it, how can failure be embraced through the training that you do or the programs that you deliver? And also, I find already just being here that there is a safe space. I think this could go on for three or four hours when it's all chatting. Now, that safe space is kind of what I'm thinking might kind of be at the program where people, there are no real set rules, but they can, they'll end up coming away with a sense of, I'm not alone. I feel I can grow, give myself a chance, change my internal narrative maybe to be a bit more friendly. Is that? Yeah, it's, it's a judgmentless space, as Spark said, because we're into the unknown. But we're also aware that when we meet in this setting now, meeting now, I think that we're all, we're here to serve each other. But if we're just interested in, we're going to create something and what people are going to think of it, we miss the point. Mm -hmm. The point is, is that let's explore it, you know, this, this opportunity to its depth and understand that within that, what will need to come out will come out the way it's supposed to. Whereas we jump out of our lane and go, let's control that. And then we forget about potential and it feels so empty. I think the, you, know, you mentioned about resilience and the learning, it's, resilience is a really key one because resilience it almost fits for me slightly in terms of some understandings of it is this is who I am. I've managed to keep who I am all the way through, no matter what's come at me. You're kind of like, but maybe what's coming at you is trying to open you up to be all you can be and what you're supposed to be in that unknown. But because I'm sort of saying, I'm just, I keep getting knocked down. I get back up as who I am and I just say no. And it's like, well, maybe that knockdown is trying to say that try a different something. So creativity, spontaneity, love, beauty, different kinds of intelligence, you know, all that kind of, even things like humor and connecting vulnerability, all of that is resilience. None of it has a hard line, but resilience feels a little bit like stand up mm. for yourself. It's like, well, there's a different framing for stand up for yourself. Stand up for your idea of yourself or stand up for your true potential because they're very different stances. So I think, you know, all these challenges and things, it, it, they're, they're really important to get through but you've got to let go of how you're going to get through them. And Spark said about the adaptation is you, you don't own the adaptation because if you did, you should be there already wherever you're trying to go. So going into that unknown space of saying, well, I want to be here and I've got to let go of how and when I get there to a degree. I, I, well, my job is just to have such a clear image of what it is I want and how great it's going to feel and start to feel that now 
and then that's my lane. Yeah, but how is it going to happen? No, it's not your lane. But should I just, but it's like, well, come back to this. So out of that imagery and that feeling comes the gut feel of the decision, the choice. And so getting into that space is, is for me the key to resilience is saying, okay, I've, this has happened to me. How do I get into that space of, wow, I'm, I'm connected, stuff's coming out, as opposed to into that space of, you know, nothing's getting in. That kind of that kind of side of it. It's <clears throat> it's a bit of a a two pronged attack. So the really challenging mental and 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 spiritual and behavioural aspects of what we talk about, we try to balance and support with the physical aspects. So you, no one ever makes a worse decision when they're feeling good, eating well feeling strong and healthy and have slept well, you'll make, a good, you'll make a better decision than being stressed, tired and ill. Yet, we seem to, at the moment, there's a kind of a feeling that we're setting up our lives where whoever's the most tired, stressed and ill is probably crushing it the best. <laughs> but the we, suffering is like a badge. A little bit, but it's so un, to understand that no one has ever complained, oh man, all this health is really holding me back. <laughs> yeah. I am just furious that I've got this strength. Yeah. It, or yes. that, all the sleep I'm getting is killing me. Yeah, yeah. It, so it's okay to have a plan. It's okay to spend an element of your time looking after yourself and having a plan for, well, how am I going to live longer? How am I going to live better? And this support, so when that side of things is pushing towards improving and firing and making it, and whatever that looks like for you, because, again, it's not a one-size-fits-all thing, but you'll find that you're much more able to go into those vulnerable, uncomfortable spots and ask yourself the difficult questions and have those deep conversations that lead to those tremendous mm -hmm. ideas and findings when you're actually in a better physical place and your health is improving or better or better than it was. But it is that, that conservation of energy as well, because I think we often find that people are very, when they're very reactive to a stressful situation, they're, one of you used the word blinkered earlier, so mm. when you are literally just what's in front of you, I need to do this, I need to do that, and just take those off and look at that bigger picture and have that clarity of mind. But we can't expect people to, to be resilient and to flex and adapt and, and do all these different things without having the energy to do that. And people talk about resilience being bouncing back. You can't bounce anywhere if you haven't got the energy. So like you say, we, sleeping, uh, eating, all these things, you, you have to be fueling yourself the right we, way. We'd speak about it as energy in and energy out. And even just by sitting there, there's always energy going out. Your heart's beating, you yeah, you're sitting muscles, you're having to hold yourself up straight. There's energy out, always. But there's opportunity. people think that it's an energy out or energy in situation. And that's the idea behind the day is I wake up at this and it's from the moment that I get up, it's energy out until I sit on my sofa at half five and now it's energy in time. But if you say to people, what is it that brings energy into your life? Just, you know, meeting new people, laughing. You're kind of like, interesting. Can you not do that between nine and 5.30? Isn't that not just life? I love it when you get opportunities to be creative. Yeah, again, every moment of every day is an energy and opportunity. And even when you're being challenged and it feels like you're stressed and energy can come in as well. I think people think that it's, or we get the impression that I've lived that life where you just, you drain yourself and then you try and get it all back in those last few minutes of the day and you find yourself kind of. It's like, the, like your phone, you run it down all day, but you just plug it in at night. Yeah. Whereas you could effectively be topping it. If it, it up was charging it. itself, it was, and, and but also when you get to that energy surplus, and you know, it's important not to necessarily just think of that comes often as calories in, calories out, but we're talking about just an energy state where your energy state is, is expanding. We're talking about breaking that cycle again. You're no longer just going round and round, down to like Spark says, five percent on your phone, back to hundred, down to so well, who said a hundred is if you keep energy in, where does it stop? If you keep meeting people and exploring and being creative, you get more energy in, some out, more energy in, some out, more energy. Well, where does that limit go? Well, that would be my potential. Exactly. Unknown. I know 100% is where you can get to. But actually, when you get above that, you're into new space, new ideas, nothing else coming in. So physically, whether it's physically, whether it's emotionally, expanding has to be an, a, a real-time understanding of stress. Because if not, you get through your day and at the end of it, you go, I've been so stressed today. But if you're in the middle of your stress and you go, I'm stressed. It's so exciting. It's energy in now. You know, go on, I'm trying to win this argument. That's a revelation. Energy in. 
you know, do I need to bring this energy in? I'm curious about the energy in. Whilst obviously then still having a, an argument, at the end of it, you come away and you just, oh, I've expanded because of that rather than it being 50 years later. Oh, you know, that helped me that moment. It took 50 years, but it can actually be very quick, those revelations. It's, it's if you ask someone a limiting question, what percentage energy you're at? Well, the maximum you can ever be is 100 because you've given you the limit. Out of 10, how are you feeling today? If you, but if you start to think of it, particularly with energy, that it is limitless because it's how you feel. Mm. Well, it's, your, I, it's your opinion on how you feel. Our self-limiting beliefs as well. Am I happy or am I not happy? Well, to, what, what is defining either is, one yeah. of those? And, and when sometimes when we're not happy, we're learning the most and we, by reflection, by retrospect, our path almost becomes like a, a good present. And we find with the corporate world, this is why I'm getting so excited, we're getting so excited about this program, is because people are racing to get up the top of a ladder and forgetting to look even if it's what ladder they're yeah. on or why or, they should or be potentially there. In a race, who's told them to be on? Potentially in a race to get in a coffin, which is the sad <laughs> thing. And when you look at you know, the, the, the health levels and illnesses and time out and how many days are missed in workplace because of stress or illness or anything like that, it's reframing that to say well but then even on top of that missed collaborations missed opportunities and meetings connections because, yeah, yeah you have a meeting at nine o'clock until 10 and that meeting's passionate and there's some words thrown around and that therefore defines every other meeting as opposed to be able to say oh my god i'm buzzing because of that and i've i've just been personally a bit sort of hurt by some of this these words flying around and for that to as we said be the the, the, the meaning and the opportunity through which the next meeting blossoms rather than it be a kind of, oh God, now this has gone even further down and this meeting you get home and go, what a rubbish day, as opposed to the curiosity of like, wow, and out of that energy is, as you reset, you kind of find this, that was the meaning of that for this meeting. And it was supposed to happen then for this meeting now. And look what's come to this meeting because I've fallen inwards into that rather than gone, oh, I shouldn't be this way. And whilst I'm reacting to that, that meeting's gone. And by the end of it, a load of people who were there in your path and you've ignored them purely because your mind is going, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I hadn't done that. I wonder what's going to happen next. And suddenly that person goes. But what if every person you meet on the way in, you, you know, and we speak about this all the time, is that when you give that full attention to whatever or whoever's in your path, that's deeply caring about someone. It's the greatest mark of respect. And when you deeply care about everyone, every opportunity will reveal itself. You know, whether it's about coaching a team leading a team you suddenly the first thing you say is do you care about them yeah really honestly can you honestly look at that person and say i deeply deeply care about you or do you resent them at some level are you threatened by them at some level all of that stuff is in every word is spoken it's in there but also is in there as if there's a deep unconditional i just i just want you i just really care about you that's in there how do you come to that position as we said before is that boundary drops between I need this for me before I give it to you. The unconditional nature, once that boundary drops, it just becomes a natural effortless happening. You don't have to kind of walk there and beforehand go, I'm going to care about this person now. You just walk and you go, hey, how are you doing? Yeah, and I'm, I'm asking a question about what you've been up to, and I, and I care about what you've been up to. It's not like off the tick list that I've read in a leadership book that says, ask how people are doing, give them two minutes, eye contact, which freaks people out yeah. if it's not real. You, you watch tick. That's all I can talk about. <laughs> yeah. That's you done. Yeah. Next person. But all of this, the interesting thing for us about this is that we use what we do is through sport. Spark said about it being a really clever space to unlock this in a kind of tangible, it's like a t tangible-ish doorway into the... Is that a word? Ta yeah, yeah, it is now. It is now. <laughs> okay. it's cool. like, We're going there. We're going into, into the intangible space that often some of this touches on, that kind of, yeah, I kind of get it, but I don't. It's like, well what we found to be the ultimate route in for us, according to you know, our reason why we love what we do, is to do it through physical exercise, slightly gentle exercise, posturing, in terms of like holding the body, all the breathing stuff, but especially through skill work with balls, where you get that immediate kind of, I need to do this, but I, I, I don't know how. Oh, you've got to let go. Yeah, but. I want to know it's going to go okay because of the humiliation is like, I mean, obviously we don't humiliate people, but, but you people, you, you're faced with that choice to say, just let go. And you get that immediate reaction of this doesn't define me. 
And I'm interested in the in the journey, but also you'd be amazed at what people are capable of doing, which is the beauty of it. It's a great way to remove any hierarchy or perceived hierarchy within the group immediately because automatically you say, right, no one's going to be good at this. <laughs> he, me and him aren't good at all. <laughs> so, we, so it's a case of that fresh point, as you were saying before, wipe that slate clean, right? Let's build something fresh. And on share a, on, on that space. On a foundation where we're all in together, we're all pulling in the same direction. We're all rubbish. Let's see how good we can we're get. We're all rubbish or, or awesome because there's no yeah. line being set. Because we're we all equally really awesome. Yeah. So it feels like a, a massively safe space that's unhierarchical, if that's a word as well, uh, that's kind of effortless, that people can, I suppose almost like a pub environment, um, was that no one cares who rich, how rich someone is or how bad or what people do for a job. We're all kind of level, aren't we, on that playing field in that moment, and it's about maybe humour and connection. Yeah, oh, um, safe space I would hold a little bit on because it suggests that it's... Challengeless. Yeah. There is challenge. There is work to be done. There's there will be yeah, there will be some difficulty, and there will be times where you'll feel very uh, you'll feel that deep inbuilt resistance from something that you possibly didn't even know you felt so strongly about. So, I think I don't want it to be we didn't want it to be misleading. There, you will be challenged, and there are spaces in there. But what it is is, as Johnny said, there's no judgment, and there is no right and wrong. But it's it's like that that thing of it's not a hand holding thing where you just pass something and told everything's yeah. okay and you go. We, we yeah we 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 it's a case of being as a reaction through tension through closing up through you know almost hunching over the heart to you know hold over the heart to that just get through it survive all of that stuff is is the reactivity. I'm doing this thing. I've had a go. It hasn't quite gone well. <sighs> I'm into that space now because I don't want it, you know, this could hurt me and what are people that what we what we do is in is to a degree we kind of conditionally enforce that kind of come on, let's go, respond to this. What is it you really want out of life in this moment? I want to feel free. Well then be free. Yeah, but that spiky butt of acceptance that says, I'll accept, but there's a lot hold on, there's your yeah. non-acceptance. So we kind of, we're there to create the safe space around letting go of that, but, but it's not without its challenge. And to, that's the amazing thing of life is to say, it, this thing didn't go as I wished. And then to put the heart forward again and say, I'm leading again with, mm. with possibility, the heart representing opportunity and, and, love for myself as you said self-compassion and and creativity and and who knows space which is where it all comes out of you know like you meet anyone oh but it could be like this yeah but who knows oh yeah like a game before a game we'd be walking around the chamber with each other yeah just make sure you do this because if they do that you're like stop it who knows how this is going to go you're 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 done you're ready i'm done i'm ready let's go see how it goes yeah, and we're playing the match whether you like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> and you might as well do it as all of you, yeah. or rather than do it, let an old idea try and get you through, or go out there and live it. Because however, whatever, if you think your way through it, or you really live it, that's all you've got. And everyone kind of finishes something when they thought about it and says, "I wish I'd made more of that." It's like, yeah, the person that's living it never stops to say, "I wish I'd made more of it," because that's a thought. If you're just busy living the next moment, what is there to really do? Yeah. The, the idea of getting out your own way. Yeah. So people attending the program, it's really about accepting the fact that to challenge some of their existing beliefs and behaviours um, and that, that internal narrative, it is uncomfortable. It's confronting. It's hard work. Um, so coming with that mindset, I think it sounds like that would be quite advantageous. Yeah, I, I think but also just to to let go of ideas about because as soon as you hear like you know we're going to this is what the program's about. That's why we don't. We'd love to be able just to say, just turn up. Because as soon as you talk through things, you put words on things, people's relationships with those words and those concepts that they've heard elsewhere and whatever, and they maybe have experienced in certain environments, create this kind of reaction to it. It's going to be like that. We don't like talking about it because when we turn up, we don't know how it's going to be. We have that structure. And in that structure, we have every session we do, each one we come out and go, whoa, that was amazing. Do you remember that? And that was nothing like that one. Well, should we put that in the note? Just let's turn up as the evolved versions of who we are for the next set and see where it goes. But we know that 
the stuff we do does what you're talking about, but it doesn't do it in a kind of, you know, maybe if people have that conventional view of sitting around in a circle and your turn to open up, it's like, no, we're here just to be like, right, this is some of the stuff we want you just to try. And you're going to, we're going to talk about how it, you know, feel sensitivity, what's, what seems to be going well, does this help clear understandings from physical stuff that is your journey. It's not a comparative journey to be like, I'm doing this. And if that is, that's one of the things we let go of, you know, why are you looking at what they're doing? Why? Yeah, but they've just done this. And yes. And there's also people on the other side of the world at the moment who are doing some amazing stuff. Do you want to know about what all they're doing and how that puts you in your, you know, where do you rate, as Sparks was saying, in the seven and a half billion people, where are you in the list? Yeah, how are you doing? It's like, no, just, it's your journey. You're one of one. You're not one of seven and a half billion. Yeah, and we, we, that's the beauty of the session is that it naturally bespokes itself to just you. So the, the session and the program seems like, I, I mean, I'm getting engrossed in the words that you say, so it's more of a feeling than an itinerary. And if I knew an itinerary and I could see it, I would immediately allocate my own responses to it and effectively already think of what my judgment is and what I will be coming out and either dismiss it or embrace it. So what would your advice be? Come along with an open mindset or, or not even that. Just, just come, come along. along. Just come along. We can't do anything if you're not here. Mm. That's the one thing we can't do. We've tried that. We've tried. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's very, it was it's very remote. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got yeah. this wonderful taste today. We've got this wonderful taste today where people can come along and see what it's all about and take it. And really, I suppose what you're saying is no preconceptions. Trust. I think the, the spark said about the energy beforehand is they just bring some energy, whether it's skepticism, even if it's cynicism, or whether it's excitement or passion, but just come ready. That's it. Whatever ready means to you. And whatever ready is will be right on the day. If you're turning up feeling a bit, oh, I'm nervous, I, I wish I hadn't agreed to this, oh, now I'm going in. It's like, yeah, this is perfect. This is exactly what it is. And just just to understand it's 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 right and if people are you know watching this and thinking this is the emotion it's like yeah okay and if oh, i don't want to do that that's right don't do it but if you if you know suddenly two weeks later you're like actually that, that might be a nice idea it's like well, just be true to to that and when you turn up be true to you because you know we'll be doing the same thing and it always just as with this conversation there's no i'm not sort of leading the witness here a little bit with you guys but you kind of sit there beforehand and you've got your, your sort of ideas about I might say this and we might say, we'll see how we can fit it together to stop. Let's, what is it you really want? I just want it to be a great chat and that, okay, that's enough. That's your lane. Well, what do I do about the first question? What do you feel like asking? Ask that. Where does it go after that? Just see. And after that, and, and oh, it's what we do with the sessions. It's not that they're unstructured. We have immense thought processes behind what we're doing. We just don't let that rule the people and the energy of the yeah. day there's a degree where we spend some time speak to people get to know people get a feeling for okay where are we at then we'll we'll tweak what we're doing which is sometimes a nightmare but that because it's about trying to find what is going to be the best way to unlock an experience for these guys where they're going to get the most from it and it's kind of reflective of the journey that everyone goes on anyone regardless of any training or sessions or anything so it's almost holding a mirror up to what we're all doing in life it, there is just yeah i think one of the things that's very important to us is i had periods in my career where i was told you're not going to play again really and so you get that stop moment of thinking this might be it have i lived it well and you realize that's not a question that matters the only question that matters is are you living this moment here fully because if you're living this moment fully and someone says, how's life? When you're living it that fully, you won't even be there to answer. You'll be so engrossed. But if you could, how's life? You're just like, it's all good. Yeah, but what about 10 years ago? Do you remember that happened? It's all good. But 10 years ago, you won the World Cup. And right now, you're really disconnected. How's life? Terrible. But you've won everything you ever wanted. And you've got this and people think you're great. It's like, it doesn't matter. How am I living this moment? Am I going to think my way through it and survive it, or am I just going to let go and fall and fall gracefully into it and see what it's all about? And that's not going away. That's not an age thing. That's not like a, you don't earn that. You just you just let go and experience it, or you you try and calculate it and win it and succeed at it, like you said, success and failure. And no one's ever come away and said I succeeded at life. 
it's just, are you happy? Are you and happy, joyful? Yeah, I spoke to a rugby player and said, someone was saying, you need to be, you need to enjoy your rugby. I said, well, what's joy mean to you? It's like, well, I'm fully engaged and just writing it. And what does your face look like? This. <laughs> so not like this. Like, wow. So joy isn't about yeah. smiling. Laughing's kind of cool, but laughing when you see someone laughing who doesn't really want to laugh, you're like, oh my God, this is <laughs> yeah. not working for me. That's yeah, crazy. That's, that's quite <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah. But it's, yeah, it's, it's so that's the ultimate thing it comes down to is just trying to have, as Spark said, a bit of a plan, but mostly your own unique understanding of getting closer and closer when you find challenges that are trying to draw you into that disconnected way of thinking through life, surviving it and solving the problem versus allowing, accepting and revealing the beauty that, that is within. I think that's, yeah, that, that's it. And yeah, everything we can say on top of that is just probably going to lead it further away from, from that meaning. Well, I never thought I would say this, but um, we're going to have to wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, um, we're beaten by the clock. Is there anything else that you'd like to mention while we're here? No, I'm pretty good. No, I no, think we're... Well, we're ready yeah. to go. We're ready to go for the taste today. We're ready to go to roll out this tremendous product that you both have created. Um, really, really looking forward. It hasn't been done before because... It literally hasn't been done before because we've got a plan, like you say, but it's to be present in the plan almost, um, which I'm really, really excited about. So, look, it goes without saying, in these tremendous facilities that we're in, um, it's great to be within your company for the last hour and learn. Um, and we really look forward to, to working with you over the next few months. Thank you. Beautiful. Appreciate it. Thanks Thank so much. You.